better? Awesome. Thanks, guys. So I've noticed that a lot of ch lots changed since I've been laid off in the last five years. The market's changed a lot. And I found something kind of disturbing that's happened in the last several years. Um, I'm talking to a lot of other people that have been employed, unemployed lately as well. And some of these guys are having a hard time finding jobs, which is odd. This is really strange because the unemployment rate in the United States for information security professionals is 0.67. And I do believe that honestly, honestly, there should always be a certain percentage of people always unemployed. Y yeah, you have those coworkers. So 0.67. So why, why are people having a hard time finding a job? So this is some original research I did, I, I did the other day. And I found, did a search on, on Indeed and Monster, and I looked at the number of job postings for CISSP. And then I divided that by the population of that job market. And I found Utah is second to the last. There is only one job posting per 78,000 people in that job market. Whereas, who would have thought Denver Denver is the hottest market right now for information security pr professionals. Almost seven times as many jobs per capita than there is here in the Salt Lake market. Uh, when you look at other job titles like information security architect, same kind of thing. You're seeing 212 job openings in, in, in Denver. You're seeing 19 in Utah. When you adjust that, it's, it's uh, another nine times difference. So, you know, just something to think about. Why in this market are companies not investing in information security? Why? Why, why is that? I'm, I would love to, to have a drink with someone at, at the bar tonight and figure out, I've not figured out why, all the variables, why companies in Utah aren't investing in information security professionals. Now, I have noticed that three-fourths of the jobs that I've applied for, they're work-from-home jobs. Uh, at first, I didn't know how to find those jobs. Just so anyone else, if you find yourself in the same situation, uh, go to Indeed and under the where, put remote. And that'll list all of your work-from-home jobs. Okay, now to my real talk. That was just a little side bit informational thing that I just found as interesting and thought I would share maybe give you a little warm hug and figure out why you hate living in Utah. So, has anyone ever heard before? Everyone heard this from senior management. We do more than our competition does to protect our cust customers' data. Oh, we, you know, we, we invest millions of dollars, millions of dollars to invest our cust to protect our customers' data. We, you know, how could this breach have happened? We spent all this money, but we still got owned. What's up with that? You know, using public information, I, I can find all sorts about a, a company without even run, running a, an in-map test. If you're gonna do a pin test, Google is your friend. So you don't need to generate all of this noise before while you conduct your, your preliminary phases of your, of your pin test. Cut your noise out with Google. And let me show you some other, other ways that you can harvest uh, really great information for a pen tester, all from uh, these public sources. Having, having this data, I can actually build org charts. And so when I'm, when I'm doing social engineering, I can go into the org chart and say, hey, because I have the entire org chart up when I'm doing social engineering pen tests, and I say, okay, I know everyone in the company. And a lot of times I have their phone numbers, their email addresses. So it makes pen testing so much easier. IT and staffing levels, uh, execution in the boardroom. I've been able to go into the boardroom and say, hey, all of our competition, they, they have X number of information security professionals per thousand of employees. Why are we staffed at one-tenth the staffing level as our competition? 
Uh, using this information has provided me ammunition to, to get more IT staffing for, for my departments because ultimately I, I can say I'm secure or not secure, but really all my, all my management cares is that they're cooler than our competition is. So how can a bad guy use this information? Okay. If I was a bad guy and I saw two separate companies and I saw that this, this company over here had 100 InfoSec employees and this, inf this company, company B over here had 10 InfoSec uh, employees, which would I choose as a target? So having this understanding helps with target acquisition as a bad guy. Um, Project just justifications are great uh, to justify your projects. Knowing what your competition is running helps you justify your projects. Uh, for example, uh, at my last company, I've been trying to push a, a Citrix VDI project through. I wanted to, to remove all the data off of everyone's laptops, uh, containerize it, and make it as, so it was a one-way container. And management kept pushing back on me because it, it was a large financial investment. It was a lot, a lot of money. And so, and for a year they told me no. And then I started, I came up with this, this method. And that's when I went to management and says, okay, tell me who you perceive as our top 25 competitors. I want to know who you perceive as being competition. Then, after that, I took that list of, of who they perceived as the competition, and then I turned around, and that's when I started do, doing my analysis, because they took those people as serious. Then I went into the board and says, hey, 72% of our competition is using VDI today. Uh, another 11% have opened job requisitions looking for VDI professionals. So that's 83% of our competition is using VDI. And all of a sudden, one of the, the executives in the boardroom turns, turns to me and says, well, if they're doing it, why aren't we? I, I, my, my head was like, Pow. but all of a sudden, their, their light turned on because all of a sudden, it was real to them. They don't care what, what Gardner Group says. Wow, I form it. Wow. OK. so. So where is all this data coming from that we're finding on the internet? Well, it's mostly coming from your, the employees that you, you have and your HR departments. They're the most guilty. So let's, let's go into how we're going to find this. So let's start with LinkedIn profiles. So first we need to have a, a discussion around being able to do meaningful search on LinkedIn without paying a lot of money. Uh, you need to have lots of connections. Uh, originally, when LinkedIn came out, it was like, I'm only going to connect with, with people that I know and just keep this close-knit little community. Well, if you want to do this, if you want meaningful searches, you need lots of connections. So you can see that I currently have 2,600 connections. But I can see their friends, and I can see their friends of friends. So in reality, I have access to 29 million LinkedIn profiles right now. So the, the question you're asking yourself, how do I build my LinkedIn network so I can spy on my competition? Lions. Lions is the key here. Oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see someone with their profile and it'll say lion. And what lion means is, if you send me a request, I'm just going to say, yes, I accept. I don't care if I know you or not. So it means LinkedIn open network. I'm open to open suggestions for, for requests. So that's what you can actually do is when you do a search, search for lions. And, so, and then just start sending them uh, LinkedIn requests. Also, there's mailing lists uh, that you can go to to find uh, uh, email lists of people that, that are uh, welcome to being lions. Uh, these are CSV files. At first I'm like, well, how, how do I import all these CSV files? 
just quick tip real quick, you just go into connections, say any email, and then at the very bottom you can say import via CSV. And that's when you import these bulk lists that contain thousands of, of uh, email addresses that you can connect with. And that'll bolster your, your connections really quick. Like I said before, if you don't have all these connections, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to pay for it. Um, even, even if you don't pay for it, they do have paywalls. So you're only allowed, uh, a, as a free subscriber, I think about 100 searches per month. And it resets at the first of every month. So if you do too many, too many searches, you're gonna be locked out for a month. Uh, just be aware that that exists. When I was doing my research, I'm like, oh, dang it, paywall. So what, when I'm targeting a company, the first thing I do is I, I look up the company in, in LinkedIn. And what I'm looking for at first is their company size, what LinkedIn thinks their company size is. Then the next thing I look for is how many con connections do I have in, into that company? So I can see that there's 363, 361 employees in LinkedIn, which is right in that 500 to 1,000 target size. And I have direct connections to half that people. So I have really pretty decent coverage uh, inside that company. Once you've, once, now you start doing searches for all the employees in that company. You can just say, uh, show me, when you search for the company, there's a, uh, a little link on the site that says, show me how I'm connected. This is how you start building your org charts. It's very important to build your org charts. Uh, and you can even, a lot of times you have pictures to put in your org charts. They're really pretty. Uh, so start targeting down the infosec departments uh, for these, these companies that you're, you're targeting, okay? So all of a sudden, hey, this guy, this enterprise architect here that works for this company, uh, he says that while he works at this company, uh, he, he did Active Directory 2012, Exchange, Link 2013, Office 365. Hmm, I wonder what they run inside their infrastructure. He just, he just told me right here. I know that this company runs uh, Active Directory 2012. Here's another one. I work, I'm a firewall administrator. I run uh, Palo Altos. Here's the model numbers of the Palo Altos. Here's the version of my Palo Altos that I'm running. Building budgets is also helpful. When, when you're justifying the, the size of your IT department and you're trying to use this information to justify your, your spending at an organization, it's pretty easy to estimate someone's IT spending. Uh, let, let's see here. He's running distribution switches of 3650s. Uh, and 3750Xs, it looks like his core switches are, are, looks like a pairing of 7010s and 7018s, uh, and he's running Cisco ASA 5515 firewalls. It's pretty easy to, for me to tell you, anyone that, that has some background in Cisco can get on their calculator and tell me what their annual budget is, it's pretty easy. Developers, if I want to find out what, what programming languages they're using in, inside their development, uh, I can just search for the, the LinkedIn profiles for those developers, and they, they'll tell you, hey, I, I write in PHP. Hmm, I wonder if there's some Java vulnerabilities, if, if I can find some Java developers are there. Sometimes all you have to look is job titles, people's job titles. Citrix Senior Netscaler Engineer. Do you think they run Netscalers at that company? Odds are yes, Bell, but we're okay. Sorry. Okay, another way you can, once you, you have your org chart, now you can go to salaries.com. You take, you take all the headcount you found from LinkedIn and now you start plugging it into salaries.com and you can actually build in what their annual IT spending is for headcount, what their headcount 
budget is. So I know X company over here, based on these job titles, they're spending $3.7 million in spending. So when I go to management, I can say, hey, they're spending that much, I'm spending one-tenth that. What's going on here, guys? So if I don't have enough data from LinkedIn profiles, let's switch. Okay, let's switch to resumes. <laughs> now you have a, a, a LinkedIn uh, org chart you've built out. Now you have specific names that you can go out on the internet and start looking for their resumes that they've posted online. Because I found that people put a lot more detail of what they did at an employer in their uh, resume than they put in their LinkedIn profile. So what you do is you go to indeed.com and click on resum find resumes, it's that middle link at the very top left, and you just uh, type in their name and then uh, I just put in Utah. And so I'll go, I'll walk through uh, the entire org chart looking for people that have posted their resumes out. Great way to harvest information about a company. So you can see this guy's in this, this resume here, in his resume. Hey, I worked at this company and here's some specific things about my organization, about this company. Things that he didn't share in his LinkedIn profile but he would love to share it, the resume that he posted online. So, if that doesn't work, now we switch to job postings. So, job, when companies look for people, they'll, they'll tell you the world of what they're looking for. They'll say, I'm looking for a Java developer with this version of Java that has this experience, or I'm looking for a, a, a sys, sysadmin that has a Cisco UCS, yada, yada, yada. So now, just by reading a job posting, I pretty much know what their infrastructure is. So there again, when I do that pen test, I can generate a lot less noise. So you can see this company here is looking for specifically a vCenter 5.5 guy uh, that has experience in VM Turbo. This tells me a lot about the organization. Same kind of thing. Uh, I can see that what their antivirus program is. So if I know what if I know what their defenses are, if I if I can look at an organization and says, okay, you're, you're ha you have an in depth a defense in depth strategy, you're running these security uh, protocols and these products, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up in my lab that exact same environment, and I'm gonna start creating exploits and payload that I can test in my lab before I, I try it in on that company. So it helps me develop payload uh, as, as a pen tester or as a bad guy because I can mirror what their production environment looks like. Uh, one of the trouble things that I, I didn't find that I wish I would have found was a free site that allowed me to do historical searches on, on companies' job postings. Uh, I found one website that does it but charges tens of thousands of dollars to basically say, show me, a, show me every posting that this company has ever made for a sysadmin. Uh, if you guys know of a site, I, there, there's a warm hug in exchange for that information. Another awesome place to find disclosures that they shouldn't be posting. Press releases. This, this, this example here comes from VMware. So VMware did a case study of Cornerstone Lending. It's a mortgage company. And so in the case, case study, they says, okay, our VMware environment consists of HP uh, BL blades with this much memory. So if, if I'm trying to do an estimation of, of how much of a denial of service attack, how much hardware I'm gonna need to flood out their, their, uh, their VMware environment, that, that pretty much tells me exactly what I need. I know exactly what kind of storage they have. Uh, and they, they published it right in their white paper when they did the case study. And then also, Here's another great one. They had a video. They had a video of their case study. And they, see, they show these guys 
in their data center, and all of a sudden, so I don't even care what these guys look like, that they're wearing those little hot, sexy man blue shirts. What I do care about is what they're standing in front of. So on the left one there, you can see a VNX. I see two big IP controllers. Uh, I can see, specifically, I can see exactly what technology they're running in their data center because they took a picture and posted it online. Uh, I was floored to see the number of data center photos uh, that I was able to find from companies online. It was, it was like, really? Really? You posted a picture of your data center online? Really? Now, some of you might be going, well, oh, I don't think that's a big deal. But others, I think others in this audience are, are the lights coming on going, maybe this isn't a bad idea. You know? Other thing in this, this posting, they, they took a screenshot in the video of their public, of their vCenter environment. This is, they're like, here's a picture of our vCenter with all of our server names. They put in a press release. So these are not the kind of things that I'm looking for. So I can quickly do an analysis of a company in an hour or two. So the question you can, you can ask yourself, is this worth doing once or twice a year? Spending a couple hours once or twice a year and, and as an information security professional, and, and just going through and just searching for this really quick. Um, I went to our HR department, our legal department, and I says, okay, do I have the ability and the right to tell sysadmins that they need, need to take certain information off their, their uh, LinkedIn profiles? And the, the feedback that I got from my legal department when I did have a job was, the combination, while well, running a particular technology like Cisco is, is not, wouldn't say, earth shattering, the combination of technologies that your company is running and can be construed as your company's secret sauce. Uh, it, it, the combination itself could be eluded as proprietary information in of itself. So the people, the legal people I talked to said yes. Because in most employee agreements, it says that you cannot disclose proprietary company information. But check with your legal departments. So first off, should we, we talked about if we should, if, should we monitor this? Should we watch for this? So how do we stop it? How do we stop this disclosure of information? Um, having company policies in place. Uh, second, don't use vendor-specific job titles. Uh, instead, of, instead of saying Citrix admin or vCenter admin, uh, just call it a sys engineer or a sys admin. So work with your HR departments in, in making your job titles more generic and not specific towards a, a particular technology. Uh, I, I did some scouting in that list of, of companies that my organization took as being serious competition. I found one particular uh, organization that they had post, they, you could tell they had gone through and sanitized. Because when I searched that company, all, all their IT guys, all it said was sysadmin, no description no, of what they had while they worked there. And when I looked at their job postings, they were very vague. And so what they had done is they were leveraging their HRIS systems and their HR departments because now when they, when they post a vague job posting, they, it takes a lot more HR resources to, to filter that down to what they're actually looking for. So they relied heavily on their HRIS system to filter out job uh, submissions, people that had made job postings to really get what they were really after. So it, it was a little bit more work for their HR departments. Um, I'm a ki kind of guy that just talks quick. Uh, you'd like to link in with me? There's my, there's my contact information if you'd like to send me a LinkedIn information uh, invitation. Uh, there's my email address. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Does anyone have any comments, questions? Useless trivia. Yeah, go ahead.
I didn't go down. So what he asked was, is are there any other sites that, that you've used besides LinkedIn or Indeed or, or, or what you presented in this presentation? You, you know, you have sites like Montego, uh, um, which is another great resource. Uh, tw Twitter, uh, Facebook, um, but where I had the most luck with that I didn't mention in this is once you have people's names from that org chart that you did, so you created this org chart, now you start scouring uh, message board forms for, for postings that that person has put. Like, uh, I love to scour Microsoft's TechNet site, looking for, for postings that, that questions that that engineer has posted, uh, because a lot of times people disclose too much on, t on, on forum sites. Uh, that's, that's another one. Do you have any, uh, is there any other suggestions that you would, you would have? Yeah. So, so any, any site that people were willing to disclose sensitive information on, go. Glassdoor. That was my other one. I, for, I forgot to mention that. Yes, Glassdoor is another great, uh, great website that people will disclose too much. It's like buying, a, buying an engineer a beer, he'll take anything. Uh, any other questions? Okay, guys, appreciate it. Thanks, guys.